Welcome back to Zero Tolerance for another episode of the 5X Factor with Practical Machinists. In this episode, we are going to explore the 5X Factor when it relates to what it takes to build a plastic injection mold and the perspective of a mold maker, which is perfect, perfect, perfect. We want everything to be perfect. Um, and that's kind of a curse and a blessing. The first thing we want to look for as we go into 5-axis and we want to look for as many operations as we can possibly do in one setup. Um, and, and that the five X factor is actually going to, the five, we're going to take that five. We're going to look five steps ahead to what we're going to do to that block or that insert or that detail, the cavity, the core block, whatever it might be that we're working on is where do we begin and how do we maximize the best place to hold our parts our fixtures before we even machine a thing. Being exposed to many different shops, um, I've been fortunate to learn a ton from other places and I try to compile as much information as I can that I can actually utilize um, in my shop here. So I'm kind of on a journey with the five axis um, to maximize what we can do with it. And from a mold maker's perspective where we have to take a block, soft machine it, go to heat treat, bring it back from heat treat, hard mill it, EDM, fast hole, wire EDM. Uh, all those things take multiple setups. And if we can combine not only the 5X five 5X five factor mentality to that and then apply it to all the other processes, it'll do nothing but help us uh, move forward um, more efficiently um, with less error. I mean, that's really our goal. Uh, being a mold maker, you're constantly indicating, trying to make things perfectly straight, square, um, trying to hit your numbers, um, even leave a little bit of preload for shutoffs. So your 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 mentality is as perfect as perfect as perfect as you can make things. And zero tolerance, you know, that's my wife's idea for the shop, and I, it fits because I'm constantly trying to make stuff perfect. So using the five X factor to achieve that is is a is a journey that we're on, and uh, learning from other companies and places to see how they do it. It's like standing on the, the shoulders of giants it's where I can take a lot of knowledge and apply it here. And I hope that you guys gather some information from what we're going to show you as we go and use it in your shop too. Here we're doing some very fine finishes on our slide detail on our Makino 5 axis. One of the issues when you're machining is that it's very difficult to make something good with a machine that's inconsistent. If you have a machine that's consistent, but maybe not super accurate, it's still possible to make good parts. It just might take longer. You might have more setups, more indicating, more checking before you do a final cut. Um, the better equipment that you have, the easier this becomes and faster it becomes. Even though the machines are more expensive, you can end up getting a, a better result um, over time and that time will be made up for in the accuracy of the machine. Here's the results of utilizing the 5x factor to go above and beyond even the 5 axis where we're going to mount it on other machines. We're going to do all the other operations. We're going to end up in the wire machine where the final operation, second to final operation is going to be to cut off the detail in the wire take it to the surface grinder, dust a couple thousands off if you have that much on there, and end up with a product that was touched by the hand very, very little, very little hand held, held contact, trying to utilize 100% of the fixturing and all the multi-axis machines that you got. I'm here with Brandon. We're looking at a mold design for a Glock magazine. And the first thing we want to find out, um, or the first thing we want to do is decide how to mount these slides in the five axis so that we can go through the wire machine, sinker, 
and all the operations we can in the five axis. So this is going to be thinking about five steps ahead. Uh, Brandon came up with a, a pretty interesting design. I think that'll accommodate everything. It'll give it rigidity and also allow us to um, work on it in all different machines and also be benched um, to the finish that we're looking for before we actually remove it from from the uh, 3R palette or the Sunspot folder. So that's the slide we're trying to do. I have to mount this to our 3R palette. And that's what we're going to start off with our stock size. This gives us the first initial thought of here's the stock. This is the material we got to have to do it. And this will also, if you notice the holes in the bottom, is where we're going to mount our pallet. So this shape is actually Brandon's design actually holds this part very rigid in our five axis machine and allows us to remove all that stock and not lose any or have any vibrations when machining. And this will go through a soft uh, machining process before heat treat. And then when we get it back from heat treat, it's going to get hard milled. And then we'll we'll actually show this process out on the floor as we go. So from there, it can be not only machined hard, but it can also get wired. Or actually, we're going to do the sinker first, and then we'll be wiring this off. But in between there, if we have capacity on the wire machine, we can actually get them wired off before they go to get benched, or we can bench them while they're still attached like they have it here. All right, we brought this toolpath up that uh, Curtis made, and this is actually going to show the block as it gets machined. So we can see what's left over after the first operation in our three axis machine before we mount it on the five axis. From the three axis, we're going to go and mount it onto the five axis with our sunspot holder and our three R pallet. And that way we can do our roughing and get this block to heat treat. We have the machine simulator. Um, for Symmetron, for all of our five axis machining, it is just a standard that you're going to run this through there. Um, when you have a machine like we have, it's very expensive when it's crashed. So uh, we recommend it without a doubt. That's, that's just what you do. You simulate it. Um, a heat code simulator is probably the best thing to use offline, but most of the software, once you get your posts made correctly, it, it, these are very well done. Um, in, in today's software anyway. But um, this gives us a preview of what it'll actually look like uh, when we're, we're done. And we'll actually run a small preview to show you what this looks like in the simulator. All right, here we are in the simulation. It's going to go grab a tool, flip the head, and it'll start roughing this material off. And this is the volume mill type cut, which is very efficient. One thing we have to talk about is your strength of your work holding. Uh, all depends on what, how you're holding it as to how you cut it. If you can take larger cuts, you want to. If you, if you really need to do something like we're doing here, we, we're a little conservative. We only have a few of these to make, so we, we won't make the mistake. We'll make a, a cautious cut and um, make sure that you're not going to break your fixture or, or your cutter because of a vibration. So this actually worked out well, and we'll show you the parts when we are done with this. So to sum up this mounting fixture, the way that we've cut this slide is it goes from a solid block to a mounting face, which is a pattern that you want to have as a template so that you can put this pattern in for the 3R easily and quickly. It seems like it's a lot more work, but it, it does save a ton of time. But also, once once we got it mounted, it goes to a roughing, semi-finish, we leave stock, it goes to heat treat. It goes back from heat treat, we cut it hard, 
we do the EDM work on it, um, the sinker work, it goes to benching, and then it'll, the final steps will be wiring it off and grinding the sides where those mounting fixture uh, pads are in a square and straight area so that it's, it's easy and it's clean to clean up. I want to suggest that even though you may not have a five axis, it's important to start thinking in this direction because it'll add benefits as you start thinking about it. It's important when we're building molds that we share our five moves ahead, I call them our chess moves, with other departments that we communicate well and everybody's on the same page as we go through the process of making these parts um, go through smoothly and accurately. So being a mold maker, when I started off, I had to do all of it, design, build, complete to the very end. Nowadays to be competitive and do it smarter, we've depart departmentalized a lot of the uh, operations in mold, ba mold building. So it's important that we share our thoughts and communicate well with our intentions so that we can end up hitting a home run when we go to put the mold together and give the customer a good part. Now that this is just about done in the five axis, we're gonna set it up and do the sinker EDM operation. We're here at the final operation of our insert, which I wanna show you what we've done so far. This block has been through soft milling, hard milling, five axis, um, it's been benched to, I believe it's a B2 finish. And now our last operation, which we're about to do, is we're gonna wire the block right off and then do the final grind. And that'll be the end of our our 5X factor. Here's, a, here's another example of another fixturing set. The fast mill or FCS is a great tool to hold bigger stuff rigid. Here's a block. That starts off um, with a seriously long waterline hole in it for what it is. Ends up being machined to this point, going to heat treat. These are back from heat treat. And then here's our final part. This is a long core pull for a gun magazine. Thank you for joining us for our second episode of 5X Factor. See you next time. We're here with the Schroeder machine, and <laughs> thank you for joining us for our second episode of Learn, Learn to Burn. <laughs> so nice, so.